to start with what straightforward what is a brand what do you think in your understanding a brand means an identity an identity of a company thank you ali and yusuf so yes a lot of people think a brand is the identity or how to yeah dist distinguishing yourself from others thank you natasha label thank you mina trademark distinctive name identifying a product service or organization jafar ashur very good answer thank you very much these are all good really good great answers I, I would when I try to define something I always go back to the origin I go back to what's the actual word brand mean it helps us a lot to have an insight about what, what the concept of brand is or any word so the origin of brand in German it means fire or to burn to, to brand something means to fire it or to, 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 to burn it basically to put it onto fire and it started because in the early ages very early time when people started farming and everyone have basically their cows and sheep in, 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 in an area and someone else's cows and sheep also in the same area and it would they would need to find a way to distinguish between my cows and my neighbor's cow so what they do is they burn them with a mark and that's how brand the word brand became associated with identity or logos because it is basically you burn the cow or the sheep with with your mark it started with something simple as your letter and then it moved to other things other than live animals or, or you know it started to go to other things like packaging like boxes and the same concept if you have a wooden box with some um, product in it you burn your name in it and started to have a label basically or uh, something to identify your product from someone else's product so yeah this is how it started this is a very very fast or quick uh, brief history of, of what brand is or where it come from nowadays we're living in a place where brands all around us and uh, everyone every company would need a brand some sort of a brand or not just company any organization uh, could be a government could be a non-government could be something with charity not only even people even people now have their own brands uh, if they are influencers or if they are some kind of famous people um, even if you are a student or a fresh graduate you'll have your own brand so according to a brand doesn't mean to have a full logo or, or, or design it could be just the thought of it so it is important for any organization or a company to distinguish itself and its products and services with their competitors and that's one of the most important purpose of having a brand you need to distinguish as some of you already said that so I asked what is a brand to a lot of people and a lot of people give me things like logo or the slogan or or the product itself, the service, or the, the design of these things. Uh, the place could be the brand, maybe your website, your social media presence, the quality of your products or services, or the experience your customers or your audience get when they interact with your uh, organization. Also, the promise that you do, you, you create, or the values you believe in, or your reputation to the people. All of these things, including voice and people, all these are not brand. We don't call these brand. Brand is way bigger than all of these things. So these are actually what influence the brand. So if you want to influence your brand, you use these uh, channels. We call them a channel or uh, touch points that you can you can create and you can actually do them to influence the brand and i will i'll end i will I'll, end, I'll explain why these are not the brand so if these are not the brand what is a brand to me uh defining a brand is basically um we can do it we, we can do a small activity and i would love to everyone to participate so i'm going to show you some images and i want you to tell me how do you feel when you see them Okay, 
So let's start with number one. What do you feel when you see this image? Natasha said innovative, Abdurrahman, creative, think differently, premium, expensive, sleek. Now you guys are mostly giving me keywords that describing something. It might be difficult to explain how do you feel, but for example, uh, someone says, I think Taiba said expensive. Expensive is not a feeling. You are describing it, but what makes you feel, you know? Someone says secured, yes. This is a feeling. Um, it makes you feel something, feel, feel easy. Yeah, very good answers here. So this is just from a single image. You got this all feelings, confidence, comfort, happy. Yes, high status. Yes, these are feelings. Proud, that's a good one, evolved. We can go on and on. Let's move on to the second one. How does this image makes you feel? <laughs> okay, you can you can all see the keywords flowing. This is very fun. I love the interactivity, guys. Good job. So, yeah, it's it's interesting because some people take one of these brands or images in a positive way or feel good about it, and the other one might not be. And the same people, the opposite. Right. Yes. The, this image uh, makes people feel uh, not secure sometimes, easy. Some of them say funny. Some of them say user friendly. Um, it's comfortable, affordable, advanced. I would add maybe customizable. But yeah, this is very uh, different way. But if you think about it, these two, the first one and the second is ex exactly the same service is exactly the same field It's just the feeling that we have towards each is very very different it's obviously different almost the opposite let's look at another two examples this is the first one so how does this make you feel okay <laughs> happy fresh a lot of people said happy refreshing some people said unhealthy. <laughs> Someone is hungry. I don't know. <laughs> How did you get hungry from this? Tasty. Okay. Now let's look at the other one. Okay. Cool. Relax. Inferior. Okay. Brain freeze. Advertisements. Okay. Original. All right. So it, it gives you a different feeling, and that's what I'm looking at. The feeling is different, even though they are exactly almost the same product. The only thing is very small differences here and there. But when you look at this, you feel differently when you look at this. Even if you like one or the other, or, or you don't like any, if you are not a person who drinks soda, one of these brands will make you different, feel different from the other one. Let's look at another category. This is the first one here. Okay, now we're not ex explaining, we're not describing. We are looking at feelings. So happy, yeah, it feels classic, good mood. So busy is not a feeling, busy is a description. Mysterious, okay. We're not describing the image, we're describing the feeling we get when we see the image. All right, mood, refreshing, happy, cheek, good job. Someone says disgusting, <laughs> happy. Okay, well, we don't want to shame brands, guys. Okay, this is how we feel. Now, there is this, another one. How does that make you feel? Now, remember, it's exactly the same product as the previous one. It just have a different feeling. Okay, someone said it feels old, maybe not old, maybe nostalgic. That's a word for it or classic. Yeah. Relaxing. Okay. So it gives you a different feeling. And that's the point. Now let's look at this one. How does this make you feel? 
when you look at it. Okay, fun, enjoyment, welcoming. Okay, feeling, guys, feeling, not description. It's fun, okay. It's modern. I don't know if that modern is a feeling. Okay, let's look at another one now. It's exactly the same product, same service, but a completely different uh, feeling. Completely different feeling. And I like how the, the keywords keeps coming because you, you get different uh, negative and positive for both, for each, for all of them. And that's a very important thing I would like to talk about. If you look at all of them here around me, each two is exactly the same product, same service, same um, offering. But the only thing that's different is the brand and it is what you feel about it. So you might feel you might like the one or, or hate the other. You might hate both of them. You might love both of them. But the feeling is different in any way. And that's only because you looked at this image, which represents it, the logo itself, which represents the brand. So this feeling you get, this feeling is the brand. The, the brand is this feeling, this heading connection between you and that organization represented by this image. Obviously, not just the logo. There's a lot of things going on here, but I'm just using logos here because it's the straightforward, direct way. And from that small image, you, we, we, we got a lot of keywords, a lot of emotions just by looking at it. And that is with a brand. So if you look at a definition that I found here, a name, term, sign, symbol, or design, or a combination of them intended to identify the products or services of a provider and to differentiate them of competitor. This is not the definition of brand. This is a brand identity. This is the definition of identity because identity is different from the brand. I know I'm complicating things here, but the word brand has its own meaning. Brand identity is part of the brand. It's how you identify um, a, a service provider or, or a company or organization using these things, name, term, sign, symbol, or design. What, what, if you're looking at brand itself as a definition, because it's a very broad thing, and to my understanding, I found really cool, two cool definitions that can actually work the way I'm trying to explain it here. It could be a, a long-term profitable bond between a business and a customer. So the, I love this b b definition because it explains everything a brand means in a very short sentence. Another definition that's actually interesting is a brand's a brand is a person's perception of a product service experience organization. And that's what exactly I'm talking about, how you perceive, how you feel about something. So basically, the brand is not something a company can do. The brand is something the people will make for themselves, if that makes sense. I'll say that again. A brand is not something a company or an organization can create, but it can actually influence people to feel a specific way. And that is the brand. The brand is in the people, not in the company. So I think this is maybe a very deep or a new way of thinking about it. But I love this definition because it makes us focused on when we do branding, makes us focus on how we actually uh, important that we look at the customer or the audience first, not the service or, or the company itself. Now, this is what, this is what is branding. Now, I'm going to move on to the why. It's going to be a short uh, segment. Why branding is important. We already mentioned one of the reasons is to distinguish the product services of a company or an organization from its competitor. Now, in this day and age, uh, companies became very interesting from early you know, when you started, when business started, basically, in the world, we have companies like Uber, which considered one of the biggest company in, in transportation. But they don't own a single car, they don't have to, they don't have to own cars, but they actually the main one of the biggest businesses in transportation. Same thing with Facebook here. Facebook is one of the largest organization when it comes to content. But they don't create the content. The people do. Airbnb. 
is one of the largest companies in, in hotels or, or hospitality, but they don't need to have one single hotel. They don't have to own it because it's it's shifting the it's a it's like a new paradigm or shift in the way we look at businesses we don't have to actually own assets to create if you think about mastercard for example the what is mastercard it's, it's just plastic they don't have to have a whole bank they, they're, it's just a service online so this is a basically thinking about it and um, a big part of this is the brand because a brand can include be included in the company's value in a really, really big way. If you look at this, the world's most valuable brands, um, Apple, for example, won $178 billion, only the value of their brand. So if they wanna sell their company and keep the logo, this will be basically less than the actual company uh, price. So if they wanna only sell the logo, this is the price, basically. So if you look at these huge numbers, it's just because of the brand talking about the name, the logo, the colors, the, the these things that we identify these businesses with. If you looked at uh, if you look at uh, Coca Cola, uh, I love this graph because it shows you how 60 almost 60 percent of the company value is in their brand. So without the brand, Coke's glass would be half empty. It is crazy that actually more than half of the business value is only in their brand, not in their product, not in their secret recipe or their offices or their infrastructure. No, it's just this brand. It's just this mark, which is crazy. And this mark includes the logo, the color and the shape of the bottle. Now, why branding? I we already talked talked about how important it is. No one can argue with how, why, or how the importance of branding. But there's a lot of things that you can use. And and if you are a business owner, think about investing in good branding. It will help you shorten sales cycles. So you don't have to keep reminding people who you are. If you did good branding, people will say see your logo, see your colors. They will identify you quickly. So you don't have to do a lot of sales. And marketing financial asset as i said you if you want to sell the company the, the, you can if you have a really good brand the, the the value of the company will have a real money basically without actually going and buying something it's just investing in the brand and then you can use that as part of the company's brand uh, value and then enables premium pricing you can price premiumly for example apple is is a premium pricing uh, company they 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 are as you some of you have mentioned expensive and they're okay with, they're okay with it and their customers are okay with it because they love the brand because they worked on the branding in a really good way it will blocks your competitors so if you have a competitor you can distinguish yourself from them and block them to try to look the same so branding is very important with that a lot of people try to copy a brand which is another good thing but there is legal things you can copyright it you can trademark it and then sue them for it so that's something you can do to block them uh, it, it will attract strategic alliance and partners so it's not only attractive to customers you can also get investors you can get strategic partners with you because your brand looks good and they want to associate their brand with your brand uh, it will create authority in the market so if you became the leader in the market you can create that authority you can people will listen to you they will think of you as as a leader in, in whatever market you are recognize valuable proposition and create local customer base very obvious you will spend less on marketing as i mentioned or, uh, already and definitely more sales because people know you they and they will pay for you to get there um, services or products from you now this is why branding now I want to talk about how branding and this is the the biggest part of this um, I couldn't fit everything here because this is basically what we do because we do branding and would love to share with you how we do things I can't put everything here but I'll try as much possible to make it clear easy and good for someone who never heard of branding before so remember this we said that these are not brand but these are the brand identity elements these are the things that influence the brand these are the elements of the brand identity and we already mentioned that, that we can't create brands directly but what we can do is influence our people or the target audience 
by creating the op appropriate brand identity elements. So if we create these appropriate brand identity elements, we will influence people to have the brands that we want, the way we want them to think of us, basically. So this, the brand in the people's head, the way to influence them or to guide them towards the things that you want is basically by designing or creating these elements uh, the brand elements it's very important to make them all work together all these elements we're talking about cups uh, business cards uh, the logo itself the colors the fonts we're going to talk about each of these in a brief in a bit but it's very important that when you look at them you know that all they all part of the same brand or the same organization i love to uh, use the iceberg concept to explain a brand or branding or the brand identity in this case we're talking about brand identity um, the iceberg most of it is submerged under the ocean and we only see the tip on the top so if you think about the visual identity brand it's the thing that we see the biggest part is what's under the ocean so here are some examples here on the top we have the name the logo of the company the user interface the, the ui of the app or the website their interior of their offices or their shops their social media accounts the uniform obviously there are more things that you can see with your eyes but these are the things that you see but what's under the ocean the big chunk of what that brand is we have something called archetype the tone of voice the value proposition the brand personality the product service quality customer experience these things you might not be able to see them directly but they influence the brand very very importantly because so basically when we at Limefish design something we look at what's under the ocean first we try to get understanding get an understanding out from this through a strategy some clients comes to us they already have a good idea of what their archetype or tone of voice what's their personality is some of them don't so we have to guide to find these things before we jump into actually designing the logo or the whatever brand uh, uh, elements that we need to make for them i'm going to talk about the archetype first so as i said before we start we need to sit down we before des we're designing we do create uh, mind maps we create keywords brainstorming we try to find what define them as a brand without getting into logos and colors and fonts. It's all about handwork. It's all about finding keywords that reflects them in, in the best way. And one of these keywords or uh, groups, we have a brand archetype. There is three things mainly we work on a brand archetype, uh, then the tone of voice and the personality. So um, I don't have time to cover everything, but I would love to talk about brand archetype because it's very interesting. Uh, by definition, brand archetype is a universally familiar character or situation that transcends time, place, culture, gender, and age. Now, this is very fancy definition, but think of it as a zodiac. Uh, you know, when you when you have the twelve zodiac uh, signs, your Gemini, Taurus, whatever. Um, the same thing. The, basically, when you have one archetype that explains a lot of characteristics, instead of saying them, you can just say that name, and people will. Uh, and try to understand which group of brands this brand will affect to. So basically, there is also 12 brand archetypes. It's based on the zodiac signs. So we have the hero, the lover, the jester, the regular. The... I'm not going to go through each one of them and explain. I would leave that for you to research. But learn that there are something called a brand archetype, and it will help if you are branding or rebranding something. Try to find where do they fit. Because when you start in a business, a company, people don't think about that. They don't think about, okay, this, what type of company it is, how it's going to talk to people. You know, for example, we have the hero. The hero is that company that's always winning. For example, uh, Tide detergent. It's always competing with someone else. It's always showing you that we are the best in, in what we do. And that's the hero. Other than that, we have magician. The magician, for example, is someone who works with magic, like Disney. Disney is a magician brand. So every brand of these, let's look at the outlaw. The outlaw is the someone who is against the law, against the norm. Uh, Virgin is a good example of the outlaw. Or um, what's it called? Harley Davidson 
is an outlaw because they want to have independency. They they celebrate independency. But other brands like the regular, the regular is someone who is very down to earth, close to people like Toyota. Toyota is like a normal car. There's nothing special. It, but it's that's what's special about it it's very easy to use it's very easy to fix it's affordable that's the regular so each brand could have one or even sometimes both two of them of these brands and you can actually just google them google the brand archetype and you will see a lot of examples and and really cool um connections with these uh, archetypes and, uh, and possible brand or um, logo and, and and each one of these have uh, a goal they have good things bad things so uh, knowing this about your brand will help you a lot to define what things you should avoid what things you should focus on so yeah this is basically a brand archetype then we have the value proposition or sometimes it's confused with the unique selling point usp but sometimes it's it works together sometimes it could be different value proposition is basically is an innovative, innovative service or feature intended to make a company or product attractive to customers so why people will buy from you why people will pay your money to get a product or a service and this might go away from branding to marketing but it's helpful in the branding process to understand it because it will give the brand uh, proposition it's it, something it needs for example domino's pizza their value proposition is a good hot pizza delivered to your door within 30 minutes of ordering at a moderate price so yeah this is basically their value proposition it's good to know it's good to to have it written down because you need to when you when you work on the brand itself this is part of the brand volvo the safest most durable station wagon your family can travel at a significant price premium also, the, the value proposition doesn't have to be for the full brand. It could be for one product. For example, the MacBook has its own value proposition. It's a full-size experience in the lightest and most compact laptop. So basically, you're summarizing everything this product is for, why people would buy it, and you put it in a nice sentence, and you can use that to brand this product, to write the messaging, the advertisement. Everything should follow this, basically, a value proposition. Let's move on to something else. Let's talk about business naming. This is the most difficult part of branding or creating a business, basically. If you want to find a name, finding a name for a business is very, very difficult. And because you don't want to change it, because logo, okay, you can change the logo. Colors, you can change the colors. But the business name is very, very important. If you're changing business name, you're starting all over again from zero. So in order for you to, to, to start with, but basically brainstorming a business name you need to understand what kind of name you want because there are different ways different types or categories of names you can go with something we call anonymous which is a person or a family name we have disney tesla mayad the person name could be someone who founded the company or a family name of the founders or it could be someone historic like tesla that's connected to the values of your brand you can go with something descriptive straightforward american airlines dubai parks university of bahrain straightforward you're just describing it might not be very creative but it's helpful for some uh, official organization acronymic is basically a letter based where you have for example kfc hsbc and bb and these letters means it's something so it's actually a long word that then summarize so instead of saying kentucky fried kitchen you can just say kfc and the letter base or the acronymic is something you don't pronounce. However, the abbreviative name is something you can pronounce. It's readable, like NASA, ALBA. It's when you are get really lucky and you have uh, a summarizing, instead of saying aluminium Bahrain, you say ALBA. You take one or two letters, you put them together, you create a new word for you, and that word become your brand name. You can open the dictionary and find any word and use it like Slack, Uber, Marvel, these are real words that have their own meaning. The meaning may, may or may not have connection with your brand, but if it's a name that's distinguished, if you can use it to, to describe, or not just describe, to dis identify your business, then you can use it. Obviously, you need to check if it's not um, someone else took the name as well, because you might find a name that is kind of rare, not being used everywhere. Composite. 
is basically glowing towards together. Facebook. You put them together, you create a new name, Facebook. Snap, chat. We have also Limefish, my company. It's Lime and Fish. So when you glue them, you have a new word. You can invent your own word, basically. And you can do that through changing a spelling or the something that sounds... Uh, something new that sounds familiar like kleenex kleenex came from the word clean but the way they use the the spelling it's completely invented invented they invented that instagram as well it's kind of glue one insta instant and gram uh, gram means i think something old like phonogram so it works for them also a good example is telb it's a bahraini business it's basically basically helping teachers or, or helping tutor uh, tutor tutoring so telb Instead of saying help and tutor, helping tutors, so help. It's very smart, invented word. Uh, you can also use non-English. If you are not English speaker, you can use things like Samsung. Samsung means uh, in Korean, three stars. Huawei in Chinese, it means uh, different things. Tamkin is a very famous, um, good brand that is actually Arabic, but sounds good in English as well. If you want to use an Arabic name for your brand, and you are aiming to work internationally or with non-English speaker, it's very important to use words or names, letters that are not, uh, doesn't include uh, difficult to pronounce. Uh, in Arabic, especially, you have try to avoid these in the name, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for non-English people to pronounce it and spell it as well. Uh, you can go with abstract name. Abstract is basically an invented word that has no meaning at all, but sounds powerful. And a good example of this is Rolex. So Rolex, uh, when you when you just hear the name or look at it, you feel luxurious. But this word has nothing to do with luxury other than using the letters R, L, and X. Because luxury has R, L, and X. So using these words, playing with them in a smart way, you get something abstract, has no meaning, but you can actually use it as a brand that gives you that feeling that you want. Kodak came, uh, I think, during the Industrial Revolution. So they wanted something mechanical, something sounds like a machine. So Kodak has that sound of it that makes it very interesting. Um, so this, these are the categories for the names. So when you choose a name, obviously you need to check if it's available, if you want a domain for it, if you want a social media account with it. Uh, if no one else using it internationally or locally, um, it has to be differentiated, obviously, meaningful. It doesn't have to. I might disagree with meaningful, but it would be a good bonus, good uh, value if it has a meaning related to you, but it doesn't have to. Like Apple does not sell apples. I always say this example. Apple sells computers and phones. They don't sell apples, but their name is Apple. So it doesn't have to be directly connected. Uh, timeless is a good example. It's a good uh, checklist you, you have to do. Basically, timeless means in you, it works for all the time. So try to not use something that is uh, trendy because the trends change very fast. Emotional. So emotional it has to have kind of feelings or emotion to it. And musical, it's good to have something that easily to be spelled. Sounds really good. Doesn't have very difficult letters that should go with each other. So yeah, basically we talked about the archetype, the value proposition, and the naming. On the, we went on top to the name. Now we can talk about the logo, which I think most of, of us would love to learn more about logos. Because logos are fun, they're fun to work, fun to create. And it's basically the interesting because it's really summarizes all the company in one image. Uh, when I studied visual design, we they don't like to use the word logo because the word logo came from logotype and logotype means it's a uh, stylus text but a logo could be also an icon a mark so instead of saying logo we say visual identifier and i think that's a very fancy way of saying a logo however i'm gonna continue saying logos during the session just to make things easier so a definition very quick one logo is a graphic mark an emblem, simple, or a stylized name used to identify a company, organization, product, or brand. It may take the form of an abstract or figurative design, or it may present a style 
version of the company's name, it has sufficient brand recognition. So you can use an image or you can use text and the text uh, it needs to have some sp something special to make it recognized and not just normal font. So when, when it comes to creating logos, we already started with learning the archetype, the personality, the values, all these keywords. Now we try to translate these keywords into something visual and you need to have some artistic uh, skills in this. So either you do it by yourself or you hire an artist or a designer who can actually do it for you. Um, but before you go there, the same way we, you, when you come, you, the same way I explain how to make names, it's very important to understand the types of names. Making logos also is very important to understand the types of logos that you can use. There are three major categories here. We have the icon, the word mark, and the emblem. The icon is basically an image that you can see. It could be a shape or a different shapes attached to each other. The word mark, also we call it logo type, is basically a stylized name. The emblem is basically a bit of both when you have a name and an image combined together. And it's a bit older style used in, 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 in wars, basically, or all universities uses. But these are the, taped, uh, the, the main types. Now let's look at the icon. The icon has also three subcategories here. It could be a character logo. So a character of a person, an animal, or a representation of that character. It could be fictional or non-fiction. The abstract has no, no meaning at all. Like if you look at Pepsi, what, does the, what is that? It's just a ball with a line in it. Is it, is it a marble? Is it has no meaning. Maybe there is a meaning, but it's not obvious. Mitsubishi is another good example. These are just three diamonds attached to each other. I don't know what they mean. You need to go and look it up to know. So that's why it's an abstract. Or you can go with pictorial. Pictorial is to have something obvious, something from nature. Apple, a bird, um, a jaguar. These it could be an animal, it could be an object, it could be a fruit, it could be anything other than a character, obviously. But yeah, these are the three types uh, in icon. Then you have the word mark. Basically, you can have a whole word or you can have a letter or uh, more than one letter, basically, letter based. So McDonald's, for example, is just M. It's a, still called a word mark, al although a lot of people think it's an icon more because it's very stylized, but it's as a letter after all. So yeah, then you have the emblem. Uh, this is the old, a lot of companies are moving away from an emblem and changing them, but uh, because it's too complicated, it's not easy to reproduce. It's, it doesn't work good in small spaces and social media. Um, so they're moving from emblem to an icon. Now, there is a really cool uh, exercise. I would like you guys to, I would like to do it with you guys. I'm gonna show you two objects or characters. One is called Boba, and the second one is called Kiki. I want you to tell me which one is Boba and which one is Kiki. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, we got our answers. Kiki is on the left most of you are saying that and boba this is the one on the right kiki on the left someone is saying kiki on the right but most of you says that boba the one on the right and the kiki on the left um this experiment has done in many places with a lot of people and almost 90 percent of people get the same answer the pointy one is Kiki and the rounded one is Boba. Now, why this happens? Why does it happen? It's very interesting. Um, there are a few theories. Some of us think uh, that because of the way when you pronounce Boba, your mouth becomes rounded. And when you say key, your mouth is kind of sharp. It feels sharp. I don't know why. So the shape sharp works better with it. Um, some of the people said that because of the letters themselves, the K or Kaf in Arabic is actually a pointy designed letter and the Ba and the B is a rounded letter. 
maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the people who designed these letters or wrote these letters wrote them based on the shape, not on the sound, not on the, not, you know what I mean? It's the other way around, maybe. Uh, some suggest, some scientists believe that there is a connection between the hearing and pronunciation part of the brain and the visual part in the brain. So that's the connection happens. Um, but we don't know what is the real reason. However, we can use this phenomena to design logos based on the name. And you can see that in many examples I have here. You find on the right side, a lot of uh, businesses that have the ba, B sound uses rounded shapes. And on the other side, you have the K sound. It doesn't have to be K, it could be C or Q. But they always have some kind of sharp edges. It, this is not a, a rule you have to follow, but it helps you to uh, have the name or the sound of the name connected with the visual which creates a better impact with most of people. Not everyone will fall for this, but most of the people will find this uh, in connection helpful for them. Now, moving on from the logo, we have the typography, the type, the fonts. And this is a really huge part. I, I only have this one slide. It's just a fun slide I found. But I can do a whole session about only fonts and typography. The main important thing is that each typography or typeface or font has its own meaning other than the meaning that the word is saying. It's basically how the letters are formed. So if you want to learn more about typography, you can just search that typography. It's it's a really huge, huge part. And uh, especially in Arabic and English, there is very interesting things you need to learn. But in this session, I'm only talking about branding. So when you choose a font for your logo, it has it needs to be easy to read. That's very important. So something easy, legible, easy to read. The letters are very obvious. Um, and the meaning you're giving, it has to connect with the actual business. Uh, it has to be relevant. So if you're doing something traditional, you might use some traditional font, but not the ones here. These are not a good examples of fonts that I have in the slide. These are all horrible. but. I love how they have different feelings connected to the actual design of these letters. Then there is layout. Layout is how you lay out your information in, in a piece of document or design or a poster. If you have something like number one here, very symmetrical, it shows you that you are a company or a business. It's all about balance. It's all about being good. It's all about being organized. Maybe something good for that, but maybe not. So layout describes your approach to the organization. The composition and structure of the visual elements beginning with basic decisions. So symmetrical, asymmetrical. So if you go moving from horizontal to vertical structure and the equal of unequal distribution, all of this is important. Also the quantity of white space between the elements. Is it busy? Is it very clean? If you have something like number two, it looks more dynamic. It's moving around, it's taking you left and le right again. So it's a flowy brand. So you have to th think about these things. What what would work for the audience and for the brand itself. So it changes a lot. Number three here we have like big image, emphasis on big image, and small information on this on the side. It's different layouts. Each layout has different feeling. Also with shapes, especially with designing a logo or any image shapes are very important so when you look at something square it's look a uh, structure it looks very steady when you look at uh, a triangle a triangle is pointy it might uh, give you a feeling of danger when you have something rounded it feels friendly it feels uh, supported protection if you have something vertical it feels stable it's balanced if you have something horizontal it feels may maybe you know, composture, it has a sense of community. If it's something diagonal on the side, it feels dynamic or speed, like F1 logo, for example, it's diagonal. But yeah, if, if each, each um, shape will have its own meaning and the meaning has to connect with the brand values. Then we have colors. Most 
em- emotive elements it has very emotional or connection is colors so if you are a color blind i'm very sorry for you <laughs> because c- colors are very very important with with emotions significant of colors is is global everywhere in the world can have some kind of emotion even if it was different but there is kind of emotion so a combination of a palette of colors may give you different reflection and trends and um, even even if there is no color like black and white it also gives you that feeling so psychology of colors can be important part of selection in the color itself so we have let's go with red for example excitement bold it's passionate energy it's also also mean danger aggression warmth heat that was uh, that, that's why a lot of food products use red with yellow because it want they want to feel hot they want to feel fresh speed uh, orange is connected with friendly cheerful confidence it's also very innovative color it thinks of youth fun uh, it's affordable approachable um green is peaceful is natural healthy growth freshness blue is connected with trust uh, strength professionalism serious integrity connection that's why all, most of social media use blue so twitter facebook they all use, use blue because it's conne- it means connection it means getting things you have purple is imaginative magical creative that also feels wisdom luxury wealth uh black that no, we don't have it here black feels power sophistication uh white is pure clean brown could you feels like masculine or food like meats chocolate uh pink fun feminine vibrant you can also have a diverse color like um google microsoft nbc and ebay all four colors that give you meaning of variety that we do everything and we connect with a lot of emotions at the same time so that's with color then uh, these are good things that a good brand would have as i said earlier it could be meaningful it doesn't have to apple is not a meaningful logo they have to come up with a meaning after but when it's that it doesn't have a meaning but if you look at this airbnb logo i'm not sure if this is correct or not but this it's really cool and it to explain the story of the logo itself it's a letter a with a heart in the middle it's upside down heart and there's a pen for the place and it's also someone raising their hand like a people here so it shows all these values in one icon you don't have to do this in every logo you do but it will be an extra good thing to have a meaning behind the shape even the shape looks abstract in its own thing, uh, when you look at it without explaining it's really good to have this connection uh, it needs to be memorable very important and w- the way we do this is uh we think about would a 5 years old child will be able to draw the logo from their memory if they can do it then it succeeded this uh, point so it, having it memorable is very important and the way to do this is to make it very clean very easy very simple the more complicated things in the logo the less memorable it is and that's an issue a lot of uh clients come to us trying to to find it difficult to understand they think of the logo is i have to put everything i have in it every business service like i am a shop that sells chocolate and chips and ice creams and i want all of these objects in my logo and that's not how it works because the logo is not an uh, it's, it's not a marketing material it's not an ad it's not a poster it's only something to identify identify you from competitors so having everything in their logo and basically having the service in the logo doesn't make sense it needs this is nike you don't have a shoe you don't see a shoe but you see values of the company you see speed you see success you see getting things done just do it that's what i see and that's what their values are their values as the sellers and that's what makes a brand you know in the next level other than just doing business or khalas the second part is consistency consistency is very very important and a good example here is coca-cola they use the specific red color everywhere everywhere you go their cars their business cars their uh, products their website their social media and they use the same logo there is no different version of the logo and uh, it's very important to have consistency because sometimes it happens when you have a business small business going on and you have a new logo you did the rebranding and you used the new logo but you're still using the old logo in a place 
no this is creates confusion to the customer you need to keep everything consistent and uh, to the to the right message the way you talk to people to the uniform to everything it needs to be consistent and the biggest the bigger the business is the more complicated it gets and we have these uh, you know a lot of companies do that like especially with franchises they open in saudi arabia they move to bahrain the the marketing um, department in bahrain changed things but in saudi it's not changed so when you travel and you see it there you're not sure if it's the same company or not so having consistency yeah it ne- it's very important to keep things organized and important uh, adaptable the logo uh, needs to work in everywhere so if even if you are designing it for one thing now think about the future maybe i need to create a new product maybe i will expand to different type of products so how the logo will fit there it needs to be adaptable so you're not using much colors one two colors maximum so it doesn't conflict with something else you want to use the columns the logos in. then you have relevant obviously so if you look at ibm and toys r us ibm is when you're just looking at the logo you know that it's it's a technical company it's for business it's very serious when you look at toys r us you know this is for kids even if you don't know this companies you will feel relevancy to the colors they're using the typography they're using matches the business and their audience so imagine if ibm uses toys r us colors or toys r us uses ibm colors it will not work so that's why these decisions are made to make it relevant timeless now being timeless or not timeless is a, a good uh, very important point and you see the difference between coca-cola and pepsi pepsi changes their logo a lot and that's part of their brand so it's not a bad thing it's part of pepsi to have new fresh cool yalla shabab they always have they, they're always targeting the younger generation so that's why the change is part of their brand coca-cola no they never change maybe there's a few changes but in general they never change the logo because they're targeting more uh, people who appreciate classic nostalgia um they appreciate connections families friendships so they stay as they are throughout the years and that's very important um some businesses they when they have to do branding they keep the timeless feel when it, in a, in a way that they don't change everything they change it slightly so most people will not notice that it changed but this change or this rebranding happens for a lot of reasons some of it technical some of it um you know you don't need the name anymore people, our logo is very famous now you don't need the name or we don't need the colors anymore it's, but it is actually timeless just to recap we talked about what is the branding we understand branding how did it came from the origin and we understand uh, hopefully we we learned about the how branding is, is is meaning and and what how can we define it we also talked about why and why important branding is and we talked about how you can actually do it uh, in a very brief and what makes a good branding i would love to thank everyone who joined